Numerical Computation, Chapter 9, Video 10. We now take a look at um, several examples of uh, the explicit Adam Bashbaugh method for small values of k. The simplest example, the example number one, is when k equals to zero. So if you recall the method, if k is zero, then we'll be using only one point, only the point at n, nothing um, earlier. And you will have one point to interpolate the polynomial, which becomes a polynomial of degree zero, which is a constant. So we'll be putting p zero, the polynomial degree zero, to be simply equal to f at n, a constant, not depending on t. So integrating a constant exactly gives you um, the constant multiplied by the length of your interval, which is h. So writing out the um, numerical scheme, and we recognize this as a first-order um, forward explicit method. So it's the um, forward Euler. We are familiar with that one. Our second example, when we increase k by 1 and consider a equals to 1, and then we will have two points. So these are the two points at tn and one point in the past, that's tn minus 1, which means we are now given xn and xn minus 1, and we can use them to compute fn and fn minus 1 as following. That's just a function evaluation. Okay, so fn is evaluated at index n, fn minus 1 is the function f evaluated at index n minus 1 for both t and x. Now you can use a linear interpolation and you get a piecewise um, linear function as a polynomial degree 1 to approximate the f. One can write this out either in Lagrange form or just write out the point slope form of a straight line going through these two points. Okay, and that becomes my P1. And then you can um, set up your numerical scheme and the, the step change in x will be the integral over this time interval of the P1, which is this one here. So if you work out this integral in T, then um, this is what you get. Okay, so we skip some detail. If you're curious, you can go and work that out. So this becomes just like um, 3 over 2 times h in front of fn, and the negative half of h in front of f, n minus 1. Okay, so this is the kind of a famous second-order adam bashbaugh method. Now, take a closer look at this method, this algorithm. We realize that in order to initiate this iteration, to compute the value at n plus 1, you need the value at n, and you need the value at n minus 1. So which means you will need two initial starting value, meaning x0 and x1, then you can start computing x2, and then x3, and so on. So, but only x0 is given, so we need to find a way of getting an x1. Well, this you could use some other um, explicit method like Hoyn or runge kutte okay? And once you have it, then you can use the Adam Bashful and do the iteration. And now if f equals to 2, well, you can um, follow the general setup and work out the integrations of the um, cardinal functions of the interpolating polynomial and uh, get this iteration time step tm xm plus 1 is xm plus this form so these numbers are exactly the integral of the cardinal functions divided by h and if you increase k further we will have a fourth order method which takes four different f values and combine them with these weights in this form so if you are curious of how these weights come out, you can go ahead and integrate the cardinal functions, which is just a polynomial of degree 4. You can work out the details. Okay, so um, some um, critics on these methods, 
The good part would be they are simple and they actually require minimal numbers of function evaluation. So keep in your mind in an algorithm like this what takes most time, what is most expensive, as we call it, is the function evaluation. Okay, so you want to do as few as possible. And for this method, you actually need one each time because you can store the past ones. So it's pretty fast. So some disadvantages come with this method. This comes from the fact that we interpolate using polynomial interpolation to the function f using the data from tn, tn minus 1, tn minus 2 to tn minus k to approximate the value of the function at a point tn plus 1, which is outside the interval of interpolation. So this is called an extrapolation, and the arrow there does not follow the arrow formula we had for interpolation, and actually the arrow will be bigger. So it's a disadvantage. Okay, so next time we'll see a way of fixing this little disadvantage and get something a bit more accurate. So hope you enjoyed it. See you next time.